Okay, so I'm just going to give a quick example as to how to actually have a QSO using uh, WSJTX. Um, I'm going to specifically see if I can't go back to someone that is on uh, JT9. So I'm not going to do JT65. I'm going to use JT6, uh, JT9 for this example. Uh, you can see on my rig, I've got everything set up. I'm at 7.078, which is kind of the area for the JT9 on 40 meters. That's where all the activity is right now. Down here, you'll be able to see me start to pull up and show up over here. Um, down here, I'm going to go ahead and just start with clean slate so you know I've selected 40 meters, right? Uh, up here in the mode, I've selected JT9. I've got uh, pretty much everything ready. You can see the whole waterfall up here. Uh, you can see a JT65 conversation right here. Uh, typically, um, all from about 7.076 all the way up to 7.078.5, which would be to here. So from here down is going to be uh, JT65. From about five up, 500 uh, up from there is going to be JT9. So, and then sometimes you'll see like Olivia stations uh, up here. Um, so you've got a fair number of traces. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 active cues that's going on right now. It's currently monitoring and reading, it's decoding, so it's picked up all of these. Here's a station, so I'm gonna double click him. And it is automatically, uh, has generated, has pulled his call sign out of the middle, has put it here. He also had his grid here, so it put it here. Um, when it generated the message, it set this. It also automatically enabled um, transmit mode. You can change that here in the settings, uh, let's see, uh, double clicks uh, on call sets TX enable. Uh, that's turned off by default. I turn it on. I prefer it. Um, so it is now, what it did is it automatically detected, okay, he's at 865 hertz above uh, 7.078. So you can find it up here. There, there he is. He had a nice good clean signal. Um, I have JT Alert going on as well. I can see he's from South Dakota. Um, he's about 850 kilometers away. So I just finished transmitting. And we're going to go ahead and see if he comes back to me now. <coughs> One thing I've done, I, I've kind of done this already. Um, and you should have been able to see seen that. I haven't fine-tuned it though. But the ALC and the power level should be uh, perfectly set. I, I think I'm running at about 15 watts. I don't like to go much higher than that. I don't want to burn up my finals. Um, the ALC, uh, if it's down here, it's really, really weak. I try to get it to be smack dab right on. I try to not get it over though, or else you're going to cause a bunch of splatter. So you can see the trace is coming back. This right here, this narrow section, that's where I was transmitting. It leaves a gap just to still indicate time. Um, so you can see he is coming back to me right now. He was at negative 10. Uh, he just gave me a really good report. So I just double click. Notice that it automatically set this back. I'm in a bad position. Um, so I'm going to give him a little bit of a better report just because I'm behind a big hill. So his signal is probably coming into Utah significantly better than that. It's just... Uh, I'm in a really bad spot. Um, let's try and switch this back while we're transmitting. You can see, let's see, yeah, I'm at about 15 watts right now, uh, looking that you can't see in the camera. Um, on my other auto tuner, uh, it says I'm right at 15 watts and the ALC is set perfectly. You can also see that I'm on air. Um, so now what it's doing is uh, when I double clicked it, it automatically generated the list of messages. Say, for example, he was like an E, right? And then I were to, I'll wait for this to finish. But ju let's just say that there was an E on the end of it, right? Uh, what I could do is come generate the standard messages and it would automatically pop pre populate them. I'll change it back just to show you. Um, so he should have received that now.
So he's at uh, 865 hertz above uh, here. He's coming back. He's probably running on just like 5 watts. A lot of these guys run on 5 watts, very QRP, uh, small little kind of setups, very portable setups. So I wouldn't be surprised if maybe that's also another reason why his uh, signal is significantly lower. Also notice that all the times are under less than a second of difference. Uh, that's also really important. Uh, this guy would be probably really hard to get a hold of. Oh, we've got a Mexico station right down here. So he just said 73. I'm going to go ahead and just click down here because I'm not going to go through the Roger Roger or whatnot. Uh, basically, the exchange is make sure both of you have uh, the, call, uh, the call sign as well as the grid, um, the signal reports. Um, sometimes what he would do is he would come back and say, Roger, Roger, Roger. And then I would say 73, and then he would say 73 as well. But because of the timing issue, he wants to be able to transmit. After I finish transmitting, he wants to be able to send it probably another CQ. So what he did is he sped it up by just saying, uh, Roger, Roger, as in he verified that he received this 73 from South Dakota, and that was his call sign. So he kind of sped it up. So I'm just going to go ahead and say 73 here. Again, you can see we're on the air, and that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and disable transmit now. Um, I'm going to log the QSO. It's got sent and receive signals, time, the ending time, if you know. Um, I've got this set to send in there, press OK, and that's that. You can ignore that because I don't have a GT alert set up for. Um, for logging and pushing stuff into QRZ, so you can ignore that error message. And if you notice right here, he's actually coming back already, um, most likely just due to the fact that, like I said before, he was probably because of the timing of everything. So if you notice, I've been receiving all of the odds and I was transmitting on the even. Um, he, he was probably lining up for another CQ. Because I'm lined up right on him, it will decode and it will put it over here because I've got the receive set to here. So yeah, see, he called CQ. If I had moved this over here, so the receive, um, oops, that's not what I want. Let's unlock that. Okay, so if I were to set this to uh, 1,000, right? Oh, I moved it up on top of that guy. Let's go up here. So, Anything that would land in here, whether or not it was for me or not, would it still land up over in this box. So that's kind of that's the only reason why I knew that it was going to show up over here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and lock those. Notice that it just pulled this back over. Um, still one, two, three, four, five, six, seven traces going on. So not too bad. Now over here, it's also going to go ahead and show in PSK Reporter all the stations that heard me. It just it was just on simply 15 watts. Um, oh dang, uh, this station didn't pick me up. A lot of times he'll pick me up right when he's on the gray line. Um, he's picked me up several times. I haven't made a contact with him yet. Uh, he picked me up at minus 10 dB, so that's really good. It's kind of interesting because sometimes like these guys will be higher. Nine, minus 21, 15, minus 15, minus 8. So it's kind of fun to see the different powers. So anyways, that's PSK Reporter. Um, I've got spotting enabled as well. Uh, just to show you that really fast. Reporting, enable PSK Reporter. Um, so that allows all of the stations that are receiving me to be able to see it as well. So anyways, I hope that helped. And I hope that gives you a good idea as to uh, how to have a basic conversation or QSO uh, using uh, WSJTX. Thank mm -hmm. you.